I recorded some clips from three sections of Half-Life 2 to do a bit of retrospect commentary on the designs of these maps just to see the uh, psychological or aesthetical effect of the game onto the player or at least on me. Let's take a look at the fascinating and depressing world of Half-Life 2. Before I begin I'd like to set the stage and the points off of which I'll base my thoughts on. Design is an important factor in well everything. It's something that exists wherever you look. Everything is designed to be like it is. Sometimes design is creativity, sometimes design is mathematical scientific decisions. Sure you can design art but you can also design machines. But design as a whole is a colossal topic to discuss. Let's try to narrow this down a bit more to design and psychology. When we perceive anything, it evokes responses from us. Maybe a place you remember where you once traveled to, or a certain time of day like sunsets. That's what being human is about. Each of us is unique to our perception. Which means if the same scenery is shown to two different people, there is a good chance that their thoughts would be different. In my mind, Half-Life 2's world evokes a response of hope, defeat, abandonment, and oppression. Maybe your impressions and thoughts differ from mine. We'll be looking into the element of appearance and the story they portray. Some might consider this retrospect a bit over the top, but let's just do it for old times sake. Half-Life 2 is a piece of art, and now we're going to see how it was designed. Unlike its thrilling, fast-paced predecessor, Half-Life 2 shifts towards a more dark and grim reality where humanity and its morale is utterly destroyed and enslaved. If you're not familiar with the background story, it's basically that a cross-galaxy alien force called the Combine take over the Earth after the events of Half-Life 1. This takeover happens after they invaded the planet and took over in just 7 hours. Of course there's a lot more if you deep dive into it, but that information is for another time. In this video, we'll be going around 3 areas of the game and just appreciate the world Valve created. When you step off the train, the first feeling you get is how different the world looks compared to the previous games. This isn't how things were the last time we saw through the eyes of Gordon Freeman. It's late in the afternoon, everything around you is just withered. Cold blue lights shed some rays into the dark crevices of the train station. Everything feels so dilapidated, the citizens seem hopeless along with the world they inhabit. It's like everyone just gave up. Where there should have been a bustling train station filled with people, each going on about their day, it's just depressing. The brick walls of the station with the overall rustic colors give off the sense of abandonment. Nobody cares about this place anymore. Then you see this authoritarian combine police force commanding your every move. Sometimes you'll see ominous things like this combine train just parked in the darkness with some lights that brighten up the room barely. You can't go to this place in the game but you can no clip to it. It's a sense of dread this place gives. A sense of ambiguity about where this train came from and what horrible tasks this train is used for. Everything combine emits a cold blue light yet the human things emit a lively yellow light. The emptiness is the final coat of paint that covers this painting. 
these places left alone for who knows how long. Papers, cardboards and other things just left there on the floor. Who knows when these places were last visited by humans on their own free will. Now freedom is confined. In a lot of these places you'll come across locked areas, locked for ages, never set foot in by someone for a long time. They give off a sense of sadness that I just can't explain in words that exist throughout a lot of the maps. Lighting plays a big part in a lot of these maps in Half-Life 2. How it casts the light brings out the mood of the area. Like in the train station, it's late in the afternoon and you see a yellowish tint surrounding the interior through the windows. It should give a warmth to the ones inside, but the ones inside are just desolate. In the outside world you see these buildings, the streets patrolled by authoritarian police and soldiers alien technology implanted into the once human failed city. Right as you step outside the door of the train station, you see the citadel. Looming over each and every single citizen of this oppressed city, constantly watching, totalitarian in nature, displaying its dominance over the oppressed and always watching. The insides of these apartment complexes are depressing sights on its own. The brutal police force kicking down doors and snatching people's loved ones away to do God knows what. Hopeless souls just sitting there waiting for something to happen. You, or rather, Gordon Freeman is that something that will happen. These homes are just prisons with little to eat and nothing to do. All you can do is just watch Breen on the TV, giving his speeches. There must have been millions living in the city, but now it looks like they abandoned everything and left, but that's not true. They didn't leave by choice. They were taken from their homes and sent somewhere, maybe to parts unknown. People who used to live in these buildings once call this place their home. Now it's a prison for each individual located there. Soon after we arrive we have to escape City 17 and go to Black Mesa East. But don't worry, we'll come back here. Because when there's oppression, there will be resistance. The canals are a combination of narrow tunnels and wide open bodies of water. I love the sky boxes in these sections, partly cloudy with the sun shining through. I also love the inaccessible landscape in the background, just sitting there, so lifeless. There's pretty much no one else here but you and the combine that's after you now. You can see the citadel in the background, ever present. Along the way you see warehouses and other homes of people that used to live here. When you stop in any of these places and of course there aren't any combine around you, feel alone. Where is everybody? If you remember the start of the first game the whole Black Mesa facility was crowded with scientists and guards, each going on about their routine, but here there's no one. Now when we think a bit more about this, there were thousands of people that were displaced from their homes. This displays how much the Combine had an effect on the world and its inhabitants. Such a miserable fate for humanity. The time of day actually goes forward along with you as you progress through the canals. Once near the end, the sun actually goes to set down and an orange tint surrounds the area. This makes up for a very pretty view. The highway is my personal favorite location in this game. 
the vastness, the ocean, the fog that goes on and on into the unknown. To me, this location serves as a memory of my childhood. And whenever I return to this location, I feel as if I'm somewhere where I used to come as a child. On your journey to Black Mesa East, you have to go across a lot of obstacles and of course, combine. This particular section serves as the ultimate opposite to Half-Life 1. There you saw yourself in narrow corridors or maybe some reactor chambers, but here you're under open sky, free to move about. Of course there's a set path for you to follow, but you are free to stop and look around. But again, the sense of abandonment that comes from going inside any of these homes is chilling. And you ask again, where did they go? Along these rows you'll find houses serving as mementos for people who used to live here. Broken and destroyed you'll find most of the homes stripped away and empty. The only other people you find here are the Combine or in some places the Rebels. I used to think where did this highway lead to originally because at the end of the section you go off track and go into the hills. Maybe this road goes to City 16 or City 18? Who knows? It's a long and calm journey for the most part, with some firefights and battles with the Combine airships. Once the dust settles and the Combine are defeated, you can stop and go atop the lighthouse to stare out into the ocean, look into the great beyond, and think. I know there are a lot of more interesting places in Half-Life 2, but I just wanted to share the ones you saw in the video first. Sure, there'll be time to look at the others, particularly inside the Citadel. All in all, Half-Life 2 is a memorable and iconic game ahead of its time, just like Half-Life 1. There aren't a lot of games that have this much replayability. When you start fresh on this campaign again, you don't feel like doing a chore, but instead feel like experiencing a masterpiece again. Thank you for sticking around till the end. I hope you found my ramblings to be somewhat interesting. If you did, then I'd really appreciate a like or a comment. Hell, if you'd subscribe, that will just make my day. Although I will suggest that, because we have a lot to talk about.